Martin Hall joined by Blair O'Neill, who has played all over the world and therefore has played in so many pro-ams. Look, this is about getting up and down. This is about the biggest mistakes I see as a professional teacher that people make. But Blair, to just, just get your opinion on this, you've played all over the world, pro-ams everywhere. Uh, what would you say the state of the nation is for most people around the world with their short game, oh. typical amateurs? It's rough out there. <laughs> the short game, the short game is tough. It's a tough part of the game, but it's also a part of the game where if you have it dialed in, you can salvage a tough round. But a lot of amateurs make mistakes. They don't have the distance dialed in. They hit it fat, they hit it thin, and they don't hit it in the center of the club face. No, they don't. And, and, you know, people work on the driver, and of course the driver matters. But if you really want to lower your score, you need to be able to chip it and pitch it better. People say, you know, it's the putting yes. that matters. I would tell you this, it's where you putt from. If you chip it close every time. You've got to get it close. You've got to get it close, then your putting will be better. Look, uh, let's, let's, let's start with this. I mean, there may be some people who've played very little golf watching this video. There may be experts watching this video. But this is, a, this is like a little questionnaire that I give students. I learned from Greg McCatton so many years ago. Uh, Greg would trick people in a way, say, now I'm going to give you three ways you can get the ball in the air. And this would be to new golfers money. Three ways you can get the ball in the air. Number one, you can try and get under the ball and lift it up in the air. Number two, you could sort of swing and see if the loft of the club did anything. Or number three, you could just sort of just, you know, chop down on it a bit and see what happens. And you ask most beginners that. Now, it's very sneaky the way Greg told that story. Because, <laughs> in fact, the right answer, the correct answer, is the last one. To some degree, you've got to be, your club has to be coming down. The ball runs up the face and launches off the club. So it's not that you're trying to get under the ball. We need to get that straight right away, and that affects the setup. And it's not really that we're just swinging along and hoping that the loft will lift it, although that could work, but there's a little bit of descent. So I wanted this piece to be on the most common mistakes I see okay. um, in the short game. So I'm actually going to put you in an atrocious setup position. Uh-oh. Yes, you, so you didn't know uh, this was coming to I you. did not. And I'm going to tell, I'm going <laughs> to I'm ask for you it. to tell, oh, you're up for everything. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to tell the viewers how does that feel. So take your setup. Okay. And then I'm going to take you from Blair O'Neill Touring Professional to Blair O blah blah uh, 36 <laughs> handicap. Now, look, one of the things I see that people do so terribly when they're setting up is they have an incredibly strong grip. So I'm going to turn your lead hand over the club, I'm going to turn your trail hand under the club, and I'm going to push your hands forwards, and I'm going to tilt your shoulders behind the ball. Now, <laughs> you might think he's exaggerating. I promise you, not so much. If you have a very strong grip, meaning your lead hand is over and your trail hand is under. And if you have a lot of tilt with the body, you may have your weight on your front foot. You could put your weight on your front foot there, but everything there has lined up for golfing disaster. I've seen this before, and it wasn't well, pretty. No, it's not pretty <laughs> at all. So look, if I did say, now Blair, for the rest of your career, you've got to try and hit shots from there in the short game. I'd say I, I quit. Well, you might, <laughs> yeah, because it's so not doable. So look, let's... That's tough. Let me give you a procedure that anybody could use, and I think it's a very good one. Okay. And we're going to start with the setup, then go to the grip, and then we're going to get into the backswing and the downswing. But the setup, if you rest the club against the top of one thigh, it doesn't matter which, and you take your two hands, show a feet just uh, about shoulder width apart, and you take your two palms and you just gently slide them down till the middle finger of each hand gets about in the middle of your kneecaps. Now, what does that do? That balances your body. Um, you don't want your trail hand way lower than your lead hand, because that'll have the trail shoulder too low. So get the two hands equidistant from the ground, and then we're going to think about how we get the hands on the golf club. But that would be the tilts of the body. At that moment, the shoulders are level to the ground. At that moment, the spine is, I'll say, perpendicular to the ground. It is from this view. Um, and then we've got to set up, we put a little bit of lean to the left, just a bit to create the descent, but then we've got the grip to deal with. So the grip, which is, I think, so important in, in the short game, uh, I can't stand the strong grips in the short game, I hate strong grips. Like Dave Pelz, I actually think there are three grips in golf. There's a power grip for the driver, which is strong. There's a finesse grip with the wedges, Dave and I are as one on that. And then there's a putting grip, so I think there's three grips, there isn't just one grip. And so I like people with the a uh, short game to take the trail hand, for us it's the right hand, Okay. hold the club out level to the ground, make sure the grooves of the club are level to the ground, and then just put the lead hand, the glove hand, typically the glove hand, on the club, and I'm looking at the back of my lead hand, and I'm looking at, sorry, uh, the, yeah, the back of the lead hand, 
I'm looking at the back of my hand, I'm looking at the grooves, back of the hand grooves, they match. Yes. Now, if I then put my right hand on the club pretty much in the fingers, now I've got a neutral grip, I've got a finesse grip. So I can go back to actually having that feeling of the shoulders almost level, the weight favoring the front side a little bit, and already we've set up to hit down there. Can you so see one knuckle? One knuckle one would be knuckle. good. I think one knuckle is really good for the short game. Horrible yep. for the driver. <laughs> Good but for great the sugar. for the turkey. Yes, magic, magic for the driver, tragic for the sandwich. But that's a lovely looking setup there. Every chance of hitting a good one there. And of course you did. Have you? Have you? Good. We well, very nearly did. You very nearly, got it. Very nearly knocked it. Very nearly knocked it in the <laughs> pot, I tell you. Um, but so, so look, getting set up is so important for the solid contact. Now, so the, so the strong grip and the body tilts, those would be the first two things I see that people make an absolute hash of. The second thing that people make a hash of is they swing around the body in the backswing. Now, you just set up to the ball here. Okay. And uh, I'm sure my, my, my director is going to go down the line. Uh, I want you to look in that monitor there. I want you to watch this and then sort of delete it from your memory file. Uh, th <laughs> that is no good. No good. It's inside, it's around, it's flat. There's no elevation of the club head. There's no wrist cock, as a matter of fact, there. Now, good short games, the club's on the ground, and we have to move the hands and the arms and the wrists in a way that the club goes somewhat up. It's not absolutely vertical. I'm not going to tell you it is. But you get the heavy end. You want to get the club head end, the heavy end, above the hands fairly early. Now, to do that, you've got to have some wrist action. And the wrist action is up and down at the base of the thumb with the, the lead hand. It's a uh, ulnar, 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 ulnar and radial deviation. This is radial deviation because I'm raising the club radial. So I need some radial deviation. And, and I've got two things you could try here. Uh, one of them I got from the late, great Jim Flick. About the time, if you know you're a flat swinger, about the time the hands pass the trail leg, feel that you push down with the glove hand and pull up with the, the trail hand. Now, if I actually did that, it would be a very extreme one and the club would be outside my hands. But a little, little sort of inside secret here. If Martin Hall doesn't feel that he does that, Martin Hall sees on video that he's done that. Yeah, sometimes you have to over-exaggerate in the beginning. Yeah, you have to, well, I think you have to over -exaggerate. I've only been doing it for about 50 years, so <laughs> I haven't over-exaggerated yet. Um, but I, I like to feel that I push down with my lead hand and pull up with my trail hand. Dave Stockton told me something very similar, and that gives me some steepness Great way to, to my backswing. So push down with the glove hand, pull up with the trail hand, and that puts me in a position to do two things then. Literally feel that as I rotate, the arms just drop and free fall. So it's going to be push down with the left, pull up with the right, and as I rotate, I let the arms drop. Now, to the arm drop thing, so we don't over-accelerate, um, uh, do this for me, please, Lair. Put the club against your lead leg. Put your two hands up to your side like so. Now, just let your arms drop. I don't want any more contribution on your downswing in your chipping and your pitching than that. I mean, if it was a short shot, it would just be this. If it was a medium shot, it would be this. And of course, if it was a full range pitch shot, it would probably be that. But you want to feel the arms just drop. Now, it isn't that the arms just drop, because if you just drop the arms, you're going to club the ground behind the ball. But you're going to rotate as you drop the arms. So let's put that all together. Take okay. a look. We're going to rotate get. Rotate as you drop the arms. Rotate as you drop the arms, or, or let the arms fall. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. So when we put that all together, to get the clean contact, we want to have levels of the body where the shoulders would feel not quite level, but pretty close to level to the ground when you set up. We want a grip where, as you look down, you would see just about one knuckle of your lead hand. We want a backswing where there's some steepness in it, so you could push down with the glove hand, pull up with the trail hand, and then the downswing is, as you rotate, just let the arms drop and let that collect the ball. That's a Faldo thought. Let the motion collect the ball. You're not trying to hit the ball. It's just in the way of a motion that you make. So let's put that all together, together. here. Hitting light, please. We've got, the, we've got the grip. We've got the shoulders. We're going to swing up. And as the body rotates, just let the arms drop. 
Very well done indeed. That beautifully hit with a good amount of spin on it. So those are really the four things that I see as the biggest mistakes people make around the green. A very strong grip, which is no good. Way too much tilt with the body, which is no good. A flat back swing, which is, ugh, I hate it. And then instead of letting the arms drop, people just push the club down too much. If you'll digest those four pieces of information, I know it's going to help you hit better shots around the greens. Definitely going to help you, and I hope that this gets you up and down more times than not out on the golf course. For more great tips, subscribe to Golf Channel on YouTube and make sure to watch School of Golf.